Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today I'm going to show you exactly how to knit the cardigan that I'm wearing, which is called the Darling Cardigan. The Darling Cardigan is one that you might have seen in a previous video. I made a full vlog when I was knitting this in the summer and it really came from a desire to just have like a go-to everyday cardigan. I'm also on a mission to knit more cardigans because I really feel like I need them in my life. And this one was so enjoyable to knit. It is very basic, very simple, but has some very nice uh, elegant details like this double knitted placket here in the front. I, for this one, this is the first sample I made, I made with snap buttons, but in this video I'm going to show you how to create buttonholes. So if you want to have like regular buttons, I'm going to show you in that. So I'm going to knit a second sample of the Darling Cardigan in this video. And of course the pattern you can download below either on my own web shop, which is at kutovikika.com. I'm so excited to finally have my own web shop on my own website. So if you don't have a Ravelry account or you don't have PayPal, you can go it and get it there. Or if you rather use Ravelry, you can click also, I'll put the link in the description below to get the Darling cardigan pattern in my Ravelry store. I would definitely say difficulty level wise, this is a fairly easy and simple project because everything is knitted flat. Uh, it's knitted back and forth in stockinette stitch. It starts from top down and then we have the sleeves that are picked up stitches for. And then lastly, and maybe the only part where it's maybe if you're more new to knitting, um, but I mean, it's totally doable. It's actually, I don't think that difficult, especially when you'll have this video tutorial <laughs> to help you, but the knitted placket here, um, it takes a while, but it's such a nice finish. So I think it's definitely worth it. The name, the Darling Cardigan stemmed from, I was thinking about, you know, your favorite cardigan, the go-to cardigan. Like I really wanted to name, to embody that piece in your wardrobe that you know that you can always count on. You can always just wear it to anything, which I really feel like cardigans for me are exactly that. Um, and it's nice to style with different things, but then I felt like favorite or everyday. It's maybe, it's been used quite a lot already, to be honest. So then I thought like something that is your favorite, you might call darling. So the darling cardigan it is. I needed this first sample in Sannesgarn Borstet Alpaca, which is a pretty chunky, I think it's labeled as a chunky weight yarn. And I knitted it on five millimeter US eight needle. And the gauge for this one is 16 stitches per 10 centimeters or per four inches. Um, for my sample, I'm actually going to be knitting with two strands of Sannesgarn Sunday with one strand of Kid Silk Mohair. And my kind of logic with that is that to get kind of a chunky weight yarn, you could use a DK weight yarn together, for example, with a lace weight yarn or fingering weight yarn. So that's kind of what I'm doing to try to get the same weight. But you could also use, for example, two um, fingering weight yarns. I think that would work. Maybe it would produce a fabric that isn't as dense or like an iron or worsted weight. Um, but it's always a good idea to make like a little gauge swatch. I know one from Drops, uh, Melody, I think would work really well. Uh, or for example, Drops also has Air, which would work really well, or Kos, or, I mean, there's lots of different like kind of blown alpaca yarns that I think would work really well, but usually kind of yarns that work for a five millimeter, so US 8 needle is what you want to choose for this one. The Sun is Garn Bortet Alpaca is very airy, so this became very light. So if you choose something that is more dense and you want to have something that is a little bit more just like dense, uh, maybe go for a yarn that is a little bit thicker. Or if you want to have like a very airy and nice, <laughs> use like a blown alpaca yarn or like something that is a little bit more fuzzy. Okay, we are ready to jump into the actual tutorial. So grab your knitting pattern or, you know, grab your notebook if you want one, or you can always come back to this video if you are creating this pattern and I'll put timestamps as always in the description below. So if there's some specific you want to know about, or you can watch this first and then decide if you want to download this pattern, if this is something for you, 
but we're gonna start casting our stitches for the back and work our way the front, then the body, then the sleeves, and then do the knitted front edge placket here. For my second sample, I'm gonna be using Sunday's Garn Sunday. Hold two strands double together with Gepard Kid Set, which is this silk mohair. I think this is gonna produce a really, really nice color. I haven't knitted anything in green for years. And I'm gonna use a five millimeter US8 circular needle. Let's talk about workflow. So first we're gonna be casting on stitches here for the back, and then we're gonna be increasing on every row here. So you get these really nice increase. Let me see if I can show you better. This really nice increase little stripe almost on both sides. So this is gonna be then the shoulder seam. So we're gonna do that knitting flat back and forth to shape those shoulders. And then we continue a little bit, just straight stockinette stitch until we get a little bit more here. So we have like nice sleeve armhole. And then we're gonna put those stitches to rest. Then we pick up stitches here for both the fronts from these shoulder seams. And then we work the fronts both again, also separately. And then we combine everything on one needle, both the fronts and the back, and we work that back and forth. So flat all the way here until the rib, and then we cast off. And then we're gonna pick up stitches for the sleeves, work those in the round, work the hem rib or the cuff rib, sorry, <laughs> and do the same with the other sleeve. And then lastly, stitches are picked up all the way around here for this double edge or double knitted placket, which you can see is so, so nice because it produces like a pretty squishy, but it's very, very good to just give the whole thing a bit of structure and keeps everything in place. And then I'm gonna show you how to create buttonholes, but you can of course also use snap buttons. All right, we are ready to begin. So I'm gonna be casting on stitches for the upper back and one thing to note is that you're gonna be needing two stitch markers or something to mark uh, some stitches with. So I have these two removable stitch markers that we're gonna be using just in a moment. So first I'm gonna be casting on, just using the backwards loop method. And I'm gonna be knitting size medium for this one. So I'm gonna be casting on X amount of stitches, 30 in my case, for the upper back. And I'm casting on quite loosely. Um, these are not gonna be visible because we're gonna be picking up stitches for that double knitted front edge placket. Um, so just to make life a little bit easier, knit these a little bit loosely. I'll cast them on loosely. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. All right. So I have my stitches cast on. Then we're gonna do one setup row before actually starting to shape those shoulders. So we're gonna purl one row. And on this purl row, we're gonna be placing some stitch markers in the first and the last stitch of this row. And this is quite important because this is going to mark where we're gonna be picking up stitches for the front then later on. So I'm just gonna be now purling here my first stitch. And when I've purled it, I can go ahead and just open up this removable stitch marker. <laughs> and then I'm gonna actually be placing this around the stitch itself. So around the stitch itself. So I'm just, that's why I'm using a removable stitch marker. So I can then go ahead and remove it later on. And then I purl all of my stitches and I'm gonna be placing another stitch marker into the last stitch. This is my last stitch. So again, I'm gonna place my stitch marker into the last stitch. So I have stitch markers both in the first and the last stitch. All right, next we're gonna begin shaping the shoulder seams. So on row one, which is now going to be the right side, you're always going to be knitting to either at the start or at the end or then purl to if you're on the wrong side. And then we're gonna be making increases. So first, M1L, which stands for make one left. 
To make one left, we are going to increase one between these two stitches. So here you can see pretty clearly this strand right here is the one I want to create a new stitch with. And to do so, and I want it to be left leaning, so I'm going to use my left needle and I'm going to go in through this through the front. So I'm going to wrap this stitch or pick it up essentially on my left needle from the front. And then I'm going to be knitting it as if it was a stitch, but from the back loop. And I do this because I want to twist this strand because I don't want there to be a hole. So now I have knit two, I make one left and then I'm going to be knitting all of the stitches all the way until I have two stitches left. Now I only have two stitches left on my left needle. So now I'm going to make one right and one R. And to do so, again, I'm using my left needle. I'm locating the strand between these stitches. And here's where I'm going to increase one. But this time I go in from the back. So instead of going in from the front, I'm going to wrap this yarn from the back. So with my left needle, take it behind my work. And I pick that strand up from the back. So this time it becomes twisted like this and now I'm going to just knit it as if I would normally. So I knit it from the front loop again because I want to create a twist so that I don't get a hole. So you can see that this strand is now twisted and we have made one right. Then I knit these last two stitches and that is row number one complete with its increases. All right, let's turn the work. So we're going to now work on row two. So this is on the wrong side of the work. And here we're also going to be creating increases, but this time we need to do them purl wise because we're on the wrong side. So again, always do the increases two stitches from the edge. So I purl two and here on the wrong side. Now here at the beginning, we're going to M one RP. So make one right purl. And this produces the similar or it will look the same on the right side when you do M1 RP. So usually you did here um, made one R on the right side. And then when you turn it, we're also going to make one RP. Oh, hopefully that's not too confusing, but it will say in the pattern if you get confused or lost. So let's make one RP. So very much the same logic again, picking up the strand here between these stitches with my left needle from the back. I wrap it and go in through the front. So I get that strand onto my left needle, but this time instead I want to purl it. So I bring my working yarn in front and I purl it from the front loop like this. And I have increased one and you can see that it's twisted and we can see here. Don't know if you can pick it up on the camera really. It's not super visible on the camera, but here you can see the increase we did on the right side. And here you can see the increase we did on the wrong side. And you can see that the strand is twisted in a similar way. And that is what we want. Then I go ahead and purl all of the stitches until I only have two stitches left. Now I only have two stitches left on the wrong side. So now we're going to M one LP. So make one left purl. So again, I'm going to locate the strand here between, which is a little bit hard to see on camera, but I'm going to go in from the front and wrap this yarn. If I can get it no, onto my left needle. So I wrap that around and this time I need to purl it from the back loop. So I bring my working yarn in front, but I need to purl it from the back loop because if I now just purl it like this, I will have a hole appearing and I don't want that. So I need to bring my, right needle all the way through the back here, go in through here, wrap yarn around and back out to make sure I get that twist with that strand. And then I purl these last two stitches and we can again, maybe it's not super visible, but we can check what it looks like on the right side. So here again, you can see that we want the strands to be twisted in a similar way. These two rows where you increase both on the right side and the wrong side, always two stitches from the edge, you're going to be repeating for X amount of time. So this depends on what size you are working. I've gone ahead and prepared my upper back before, so I've already worked it. So here I've worked all of the increases, the shoulder 
shaping increases, shoulder shaping, that's difficult to say. <laughs> and you can see this really nice line it produces. And one tip is to not knit your edge stitches too tightly because then this will kind of zinch up a little bit. With blocking will help, but just be mindful to not knit your edge stitches too tight because that could create a little bit of problems. So here I've just done those increases on every row and then I've continued to knit just in stockinette stitch without any increases for a while longer and in the pattern it will says or it will say how long you want the full piece to be so you're gonna be measuring it from the cast on edge so that's this edge here so from here until the straight here and measure so I'm working size medium so I want approximately 25 centimeters and it is exactly 25 centimeters that's I think around 10 inches but again check the pattern to see which size you're working on some of the sizes are a bit longer and some a bit shorter back next we are going to be putting these stitches on hold or you can also leave them on the just the needle um, so we can go ahead and cut this yarn or like me if you don't have a scissor just gonna <laughs> break the yarn and I'm gonna be placing my stitches just on a stitch wire I mean you're free to of course keep them on this needle as well but I think I'm gonna use my needle so I'm just gonna pop them onto a stitch wire on hold for a while I usually tie small knots just because I'm paranoid then I will lose my stitches. All right, next up we're gonna be working the front. So we're gonna be picking up stitches here from our shoulder seam. First, we're gonna be working the right front. So that is when you have the piece facing up towards you, the right side facing you and you have the cast on edge facing upwards. So now we're gonna be starting to pick up stitches here from this line and we're gonna do it from, so you can see here where we've stopped the increases. That's where you're gonna start and you're gonna pick up stitches all the way to this stitch marker that we placed here. I can't really see, here <laughs> in the beginning. You can see that there's this really nice line of stitches here. So I want to have that visible. So I'm gonna be picking up stitches so that I have that visible. So I'm gonna just poke my needle in here and then I'm gonna just grab some new yarn, wrap that around my needle and just pull it through. And then I'm gonna make sure that I really get this nice line to be intact. So I'm gonna always go in through the stitch here that is just above that or the row above that to make sure that I get those stitches in a nice line. And I need to pick up, I think 34 for the size I am working. So essentially picking up in every stitch or every row here. And you can really see here this really nice line that becomes visible when you pick up the stitches like this. Thirty-two, and let me see. I need to skip one. I probably maybe missed one there. Thirty-three and thirty-four, so that I end up exactly where we place that marker. And this marker we can now go ahead and remove. And let me show you. So this is what it looks like now. So you can see again this line that I keep talking about, but that just makes it look super clean and nice. Now we're gonna start working the front. So first we just have three rows of stockinette stitch. So I'm gonna be purling, knitting and purling. And then we're gonna be shaping this with first some decreases. But first just work these three rows. So I'm gonna purl and knit and purl and meet you back here in a second. Okay, I've worked my three rows of stockinette stitch. Next we're gonna start shaping our shoulder a little bit. So we're gonna start to do some decreases here on this side and that will just create a bit of a more of a straight line since this is now going in this direction so this will just help it be a little bit more straight so what we do is we are going to do some ssk decreases so i'm just gonna knit first two here this is row one and then i'm gonna just ssk so i'm gonna 
slip slip knit. So I slip one stitch as if to knit. I slip my second stitch as if to knit and then with my left needle go through both of these stitches, wrap my yarn around and I essentially knit them to, together but I do a slip slip knit so this creates a decrease that leans to the left. And then I'm just gonna continue knitting this row and we always have a decrease on the fourth row so I'm gonna knit all these stitches then I'm gonna purl one row, knit one row, purl one row until I've made four rows and then I will repeat this sequence so I have again a decrease and this happens a total of four times or actually five times because it's this first one plus those four so five times so you're gonna decrease five stitches in all of the sizes and after we've done that we're gonna start to uh, shape the front and for that we're gonna do some increases uh, and you already know how to do that so I think I'm gonna do that maybe also do the other side because on the other side you just pick up stitches here from this side stitch marker until here the end again and then you instead do some knit two together to shape your shoulder and then you start to shape the front by doing some make one lefts and then we're gonna join everything together on the body so I'm gonna be working on this now this evening and show you for the next part how to join it all for the body. All right, I have worked both the right front and the left front. And a little tip when you're working, because we're working decreases here and then increases here. And I've just used these removable stitch markers just to keep track of where I'm done uh, either an increase or a decrease. So that's a handy little tip. I mean, you can kind of see it, but it's just a really visual aid. So now I've worked these here. I've done some increases there. We did some knit two together decreases. And now we have the working yarn. So I've ended, so I've ended on a wrong side row. So I have my working yarn here. So now we're gonna join everything. So these stitches are back stitches and the right front stitches on the same needle and start working the body. On this fourth row of the body, we are gonna continue to work some increases. So first I am gonna be knitting two and I just grabbed a new five millimeter, a bit of a longer needle. So I'll get all of my stitches on there. So I'm gonna make one left here at the start. And I think I'm gonna place again a stitch marker just because I want to keep track of where I've done my increases. Next, I'm gonna knit all of my left front stitches. All right, I worked all of my left front stitches. I can just go ahead and move this needle away. And now we've come to the point where next we're gonna knit the back stitches, but here for the underarm, I'm gonna cast on some additional stitches. So I'm just gonna use a backwards loop method, check the pattern for how many stitches you need. I'm working size medium, so I'm gonna cast on eight stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I've had my back stitches on the stitch wire, so first I need to go ahead and transfer them onto my needle, so I need to transfer them from this side so I can then work them. Like that, and I have my back stitches now on my needle. All right, and now I'm ready to continue. So next I'm gonna be connecting my back stitches and just knitting across all of those Oh, I need to tighten this a little bit. Need to knit across all of those until I reach the other underarm where we're gonna be casting on new stitches again. I only have a few more back stitches left, like that. And then I will go ahead and grab the front stitches, the right front stitches. Before working the last front stitches, I'm gonna be casting on some stitches here for the underarm again. So just using the backwards oh, <laughs> loops method, casting on X amount of stitches. 
And then lastly, I'm gonna knit until I only have two stitches left and I'm, I'm gonna do one of those increases because we continue shaping the neckline of the Darling Cardigan. A few more, I think, depends a little bit on what size you're working on. Um, or actually it might be that it's the same amount in all of the sizes, check the pattern. Um, so I'm just gonna be working those increases for a few more inches or so. I only have two more stitches left, so I'm gonna make one right this time. I'm gonna go in from the back and increase one here to shape my neckline. And then knit these last two, and that is it. The joining round, or the joining row, sorry, for the body is complete. So let's see how it looks now. Now we've got all of the stitches on the same needle. So now we're just gonna continue working back and forth. So flat for X amount of rows, it depends a little bit on. The pattern says for what length you should work it in. So have your measuring tape <laughs> at hand. And of course you're free to work it exactly as long as you want to fit uh, your preferences. So I'm gonna continue working that and continue also shaping the neckline. I'm gonna be using these stitch markers to mark every time I make an increase so I know exactly how many. Um, you can even put like a different color stitch marker here when you've started working the body just because it makes it a little bit easier to see what is going on. And one final tip is you can see my needle, um, they're kind of like zinged up like this. I just find that it's nicer that rather than having a like, super long needle because then you have to like do like this all the time when knitting them. So I often use a bit of a shorter cable when working this. I mean, you can't really see it so well um, here, but I just find that for the workflow and the enjoyment of the knitting process, I prefer this. I have now worked the entire body of my cardigan. So I've just knitted flat back and forth. And then I've measured here from the underarm, I've continued in stocking at stitch until it was about 24, 23 or 24 centimeters. So you want to continue it until you have about eight centimeters less than the total body length. So body length now I'm counting it here from the underarm. After that, I've switched to a smaller needle, a three millimeter, so a US 2.5 needle. And then I've just worked in a two by one rib. So I've knitted two and purled one on the right side rows and then I've purled two and knitted one on the wrong side rows until I have about eight centimeters. Uh, and now I'm ready to bind off the body. And you can go ahead and just do a normal, like standard bind off method. For the standard bind off method, you would just go ahead and first knit two, then you would pull the first stitch over that second stitch, then you would purl this one, and then you would always pull that first stitch over that second one, and you would always knit the knits and purl the purls all the way around. But I want to show you uh, something a little bit different, which I found, it is called the Rook Cast Off Method by Rook Knit. You can find that video here on YouTube. I will link it down below. So this is cast off method that I didn't invent, but it kind of mimics an Italian bind off um, so you use a tapestry needle and I just wanted to show you it because I feel like it's very stretchy and it's much faster to do than the Italian bind up method. For the root cast of bind up method, you're gonna need a tapestry needle. I'm gonna use a blunt one. First, I'm gonna cut a tail that is approximately four times the total length of the bind off uh, that I want to make. So the total length of this body. And I've also stopped working so that I have my yarn, working yarn here, so that I would next do a right side row. We are ready to begin the Rook cast off method. So step number one is I'm gonna go in through the three first stitches, purl wise. Purl wise meaning I go in from the right to the left through all of these stitches. I pulled all my yarn through and now I can go ahead and slide the first stitch of those three first stitches off my needle. So I bound off one stitch. Then again, I go ahead and repeat. So I put my tapestry needle pearlwise into the three first stitches on my left needle and I pull through. 
And again, I go ahead and slide that first stitch off my needle. And this is what I'm going to be repeating all the way around. So you always go in through three stitches on your left needle, and then you can always slide off that first stitch of those three stitches. And I make sure that I tighten it quite a bit and slide off one stitch. I've now worked a section with the Rook cast off and you can see it's a very, very stretchy bind off edge that it creates. You can see it a little bit as this row, like little, small little bumps, but I think it's really, really elegant and nice. But of course, if you wanted to be very kind of seamless or um, invisible, you could also choose just the bi standard bind off method. But I really like this. I think it adds a little something, a detail to this. And of course, when I am going to block this, I'm probably gonna be stretching out this a little bit because now it kind of feels like it's a little floppy. But uh, when I then block it, so when I soak this, I'm gonna be stretching it out just gently. But I like that it is so stretchy because sometimes a standard bind of method can produce a pretty rigid edge here. So I just like that this is very stretchy and I just like this little detail. Right, that is the body complete. So next we are gonna work the sleeves. I've already worked one sleeve. So for that, we're gonna be picking up stitches here around the armhole. And I'm gonna be using a smaller five millimeters. That's a US eight needle, but use whatever you need to get the gauge for this pattern. You can also use, of course, double pointed needles or magic loop technique if you don't have one of these smaller uh, cable needles. For the sleeve, um, it's knitted in the round, and then there are some decreases happening here in the middle of the underarm. And for the length, I really recommend to try this on while you're knitting it. So I've actually knitted my sleeve a bit longer than the pattern says, just because I have a bit long arms and I like the cuff to come a little bit beyond my wrist. All right, without further ado, let's get started. In the pattern, it will say to start picking up stitches here, exactly in the middle of the underarm. And then you're gonna pick up stitches evenly all the way around here with the circular needle or whatever needle you are working with. And since this pattern, it kind of depends a little bit on how many rows you've knitted because the pattern says how long each piece is. So you will probably have a bit different amount of rows so that's why the pattern doesn't specifically say how many stitches per rows you're gonna be picking up, but approximately uh, for all the sizes, it's approximately picking up two stitches for every three rows. But again, remember this might differ a little bit just because it might differ on how many rows you've actually knitted. One tip though is I'm gonna be picking up 64 stitches for size M. So I'm gonna be using these stitch markers so I can divide my armhole opening into four parts and then I know how many I need for those smaller parts and it's a little bit easier then to evenly spread them out. So I'm gonna start by putting my first one here underneath, exactly. Then I divide it in two. So I put my other marker somewhere around here and then I do the same. So around here somewhere. Oh, and the last one is green, <laughs> hard to see. <laughs> So I'll put that somewhere around here. So grab some new yarn and then I'm gonna start here underneath. Here I'm going to be for the underarm for these stitches that we cast on new stitches, I'm gonna be picking up one for each. And I usually like to go in between the stitches. So let me show you. So here you could either go, so here's the stitch, go in through that stitch or go in between those stitches. And I usually like to go in between those stitches. So that's would be here. And here you can again see that's the stitch itself. So then I will go in between those stitches. So here for the underarm, I've picked up now four and I had 64 in total. Gonna divide that by four. So that would be 16, I think, if my math is correct. So then I know that I need to pick up 16 stitches until I get to my first marker. And usually here 
at this sort of gap, I always like to pick up some stitches just because I don't want to have a gap there. Okay, so now I've picked up 16 stitches. I can go ahead and remove this marker. And do be careful when you are picking up stitches from this row that you keep at the same row. So you get like a really nice line here. So this is what we want to see so that you can see that we picked up stitches from the same row here. And I continue this all the way around. So again, now I know that until this marker, I pick up 16 more stitches. So here the rhythm I'm using is I pick up two in every stitch and then I'm skipping one and that is kind of working for me. Now I've picked up 60 stitches so I have my these stitches that I cast on for the underarm left so then I'm gonna pick up again one in each so I need to pick up four more. One, two, three, and four. All right, so I've picked up and knitted all of my stitches. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put in a marker to mark where the beginning of the round is. After having picked up all your stitches for the sleeve, you're gonna start working the sleeve in the round. Oh, I can go ahead and remove this marker here. And then we have a decrease round that repeats X amount of time. So depending on what size you're knitting, you're gonna be working this decrease round um, X amount of times. And it also says up until how much you want to knit the sleeve measured here from the point where we uh, picked up stitches. Now I'm not exactly at the point yet, but I wanted to show you this decrease round just so you know what happens <laughs> when you're gonna do this decrease round. So now I am here at the, my beginning of round marker. So I'm gonna slip that and the decrease round goes as follow. We knit the first stitch and then the next two stitches we're just gonna knit together. So K2 TOG, which stands for knit two together. So I knit them as I would knit one stitch, but I just knit two stitches together. Then I continue working all the way around my round and up until we only have three stitches left. So I am approaching my last three stitches before my beginning of round marker. So when I have three left before the marker, we're gonna do an SSK. So that's a slip, slip, knit. So we're gonna slip this first stitch as if to knit, but we're not gonna actually knit it. So I go in here from the left side of this stitch with my right needle and I just slip it onto my right needle. I do the same with the second stitch. So I slip it knit twice, so I don't go in from the right. I go in from the left, that is quite important and I slip it. So I have these two stitches I've slipped now. And now I'm gonna knit them two together by putting my left needle, inserting that into both stitches. Then I wrap my yarn around and pull that through both of these stitches. And we've now decreased one. So we made an SSK and then I just continue. And this is the decrease round that is gonna be repeated. X amount of time you always do it here under exactly under the sleeve so it's not very visible but it just creates a bit of shaping for the sleeve. I've now worked in the entire sleeve and now I am binding off again using the Rook cast off method and I just wanted to show you these last stitches so I have three stitches left so I'm gonna continue very much like we did for the body hem um, so the last three stitches went in through those. When I only have two stitches left, I'm gonna go in through those as well, purl-wise. Pull my yarn through and then I cast off this last stitch and then I have one stitch left. So I'm just gonna go in through that one more time, purl-wise. Then I can go ahead and remove my double pointed needle and now I want to close this gap that you can kind of see here. So I am just gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna go in sort of here. This is the first, I think, that I've cast off or maybe, no, it's this, here's the first one. So I'm just gonna go in through that one, bring my yarn 
through that one. So I kind of close that gap and then I'm just gonna weave in my end here on the wrong side. So I usually, when I weave in the end, first I make sure that it looks neat here. Try to make it as seamless as possible. This seam, maybe I have to tighten it a little bit more. And then on the wrong side, usually what I like to do is I like to kind of break the yarn. So I go through these stitches and break the yarn a little bit because I feel like that fastens it better. And then I usually try to go up a few, I try to go a few different directions. So I go here diagonally, then I maybe change direction. So I go a bit to the side, taking short not to tighten too much and that it's not that you can't really see it. And then I go in this direction, kind of between the yarn here. And I think that is secure enough and can't see it that much, a little bit, but blocking will help that. <laughs> is it. We've now worked the body, the hem and both sleeves and the last thing we're gonna work is do a front edge placket here and I'm gonna be working some buttonholes here on the left side. You can either choose to attach buttons or you can also choose to attach some snap buttons which in this case you wouldn't need to do any buttonholes but this is the front edge placket we're gonna work in double knitting so it looks the same on both sides and it just provides a really nice structure and here is really the finishing touch which I'm always so excited about because it really changes the whole cardigan so so much. So to do this you're gonna need either um, a three millimeter so that's a US 2.5 circular needle a pretty long one I'm actually gonna be using two ones because we're gonna be picking up stitches from all the way around so from both front edges and also back neck cast on stitches here so I recommend maybe having two longer three millimeter needles um, or you can get creative and you can first just pick up half and just then you have to leave enough yarn so that you can then pick up the rest of the stitches when you get to it if you only have one of these circular needles. We're also going to be using a three millimeter double pointed needle. Um, you can also use the circular needle but it's a little bit more finicky so I recommend having a double pointed needle or an extra needle. Then you're gonna, if you're gonna do the buttonholes, I recommend having the buttonholes at hand, the ones that you're gonna use. And lastly, you want to have, for the buttonhole version, you want to have three removable stitch markers or something that you can mark where the buttonholes are gonna be. We're gonna start to pick up stitches here at the left bottom front edge. So it's the left one you're looking at the piece with the right side in front of you and the front facing you. So we're gonna start here. So grab your yarn and let's pick up some stitches. So we are working with the right side facing us. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just pick up stitches. So I'm gonna just insert my needle, then I'm gonna leave a tail here, and then I'm just gonna wrap some new yarn around and bring that through. And we are going to be picking up one stitch for each row. So we're gonna have lots of stitches. And again, remember to pick up your stitches in the same row to get that really nice line. So in each row, picking up one stitch all the way around. I picked up stitches for all of the first front and I'm at the back cast on neck edge and here I'm gonna be picking up stitches again from each stitch but I'm gonna be picking up between the knit stitch columns so here would be one knit stitch so then I go in here wait a minute here <laughs> between that and pick up stitches again one stitch per stitch here sometimes what can happen is if you only take, for example, this one strand, 
Sometimes you get this little, like the cast on bump is visible. So usually I like to go in at least two or three strands below. So I make sure that I don't get that little bump from the cast on edge visible. I'm running out of length from my first three millimeter cable. So now I'm just gonna take my other one and continue with that one. So I'll have all my stitches on two, on two three millimeter circular needles instead. So here I just start with the same yarn and just with my second cable. Now I've picked up stitches all the way around and I've ended up here. So now I'm gonna go and cut this yarn, leave a tail long enough to then weave in. If you're gonna work the buttonhole version, before we join in new yarn and start working the double knitted front edge placket, we're gonna put some stitch markers to mark where the buttonholes are gonna be. So we have three buttons for this one. So they are gonna be approximately like this. And the first one you want to start, so looking at from the bottom, four stitches up. So I have one, two, three, four. And the marker is placed where the bottom of the bottom hole will be. So I'm gonna place my first marker here. And I've actually gone ahead and placed a marker here. Uh, this I did uh, before when I was working the front here. This marks where I've stopped the increases. So here is where I know that I want my top buttonhole to be. So these are gonna be approximately 11 centimeters apart. So that's approximately 4.25 inches apart. So I know that approximately here in the middle is where I'm gonna place my second buttonhole and then here it's gonna be my last one and I can still go ahead and kind of measure it so oh that one is a little bit too far up so I need to move it a little bit down you can also of course if you want to be very very thorough you can also count the stitches but you need to have the mark to where your buttonholes are gonna be before we start. If you're working the snap button version, you don't have to do this now and you can do this later on. And next we are ready to start working our double knitted front edge placket. So we're gonna start from down here again. And the first thing is we're gonna join in new yarn and we're gonna cast on new stitches, nine new stitches with the Italian cast on method. Here I have my yarn. I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail because I need that when I'm gonna be casting on new stitches. And we're gonna be casting on these stitches from the wrong side. So now we have the right side facing up and now I'm gonna just turn my work around so that I have the wrong side facing me. Grab your yarn. I have my tail facing in the direction away from me and my working yarn facing here in the direction towards me. And I'm just gonna grab this yarn and first I'm just going to be placing the needle on top of it and just twist. And this first stitch is going to be a purl stitch here on the wrong side because it's gonna be a knit stitch on the right side. And next we're gonna be casting on, well, eight more stitches. So nine stitches all together. They're gonna be a knit and a purl, knit and a purl, knit and a purl, knit and a purl. So we end on a purl stitch as well. So let me show you how to cast on a knit stitch using the Italian cast on method. For this, we're gonna go underneath both of these yarns, come up here in the middle, go over the top yarn and bring it back. So that was a knit stitch. For the purl stitch, we're gonna go from above this time, go underneath both of the yarns all the way. Then we're gonna go from the top or from the bottom yarn in through the middle again and all the way back. So now we cast on one knit stitch, one purl stitch. So let's do that one more time. So for the knit stitch, you go in here under the bottom yarn, come in through the middle and grab that top yarn and all the way back. For the purl stitch, we go in from above, underneath both yarns, 
come up and go this time again from above in the middle and bring it back. That was a purl stitch, one more knit stitch. So again, underneath, up in the middle, grab top yarn and return and the purl stitch all the way under both yarns up in the middle or in the middle here underneath and return. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need to do two more. One more knit stitch underneath, middle, over up the top yarn and last stitch underneath both of these yarns. Come up here in the middle, go over that bottom yarn and bring it here. And now to not lose this last stitch, I'm just gonna be twisting so here is my tail. So I'm just gonna be twisting that one time underneath so that I get my working yarn in this hand and I kind of hold it tightly now because now we're next gonna just turn our work around so that we can start working the front edge placket. So now I have the right side facing me and I have these nine stitches that I've just cast on and I'm kind of holding on to my working yarn here. So now we are ready to begin. So now grab your three millimeter double pointed needle and this first stitch. So make sure that you're working with the working yarn. This first stitch, we are going to knit one. For this next stitch, we're gonna bring our working yarn front and we're just gonna slip this purl wise. So I'm just gonna go in with my needle here from the right to the left and just slip it. So I don't knit it, I just move it from one needle to the other with the working yarn in front. Then again, I knit this next stitch. Again, I bring my working yarn front and I just slip one stitch. Then I bring the working yarn back and knit the next stitch. For the next one, I bring the working yarn front and slip one. Then I go ahead and knit one, bring my working yarn front and slip one. And now I only have one stitch left. This last stitch I'm going to be knitting together with the first stitch of the picked up stitches here along the front edge through the back loops. So I knit these two together but through the back loop. So I insert my needle here in the back loop of both of these stitches and knit them together, like so. That is the first row on the right side done. So now we're gonna turn the work. Now we're on the wrong side, so we're gonna work row two on the wrong side. And this one starts with, again, we're gonna slip the first stitch. We have the working yarn in front just slip it without knitting it. Then the next one we knit, bring the working yarn front and slip one, knit one, bring the working yarn front, slip that one, we knit one, bring the working yarn front, slip one, gonna knit one, and then this last one, we just slip with the working yarn in front gonna just turn the work around. So these are the two rows that you're gonna be repeating for all of the stitches. So always on the right side rows, you're gonna be knitting that last stitch together with one of the stitches from the picked up stitches here along the edge uh, through the back loops. And on the wrong side, you just work all the stitches. And next I'm gonna show you how to work the buttonholes if you're working the buttonhole version. Here I worked my first buttonhole, just so you have an idea of what's coming up. So the buttonhole is worked in two columns. First, this column is worked, then we're gonna cut the yarn here in the middle, and then the other side is worked. So now I am at my second buttonhole. I have my marker here to mark where the button of the buttonhole <laughs> is gonna be. I've ended on a wrong side row, so I have my working yarn here. And first we're gonna work this right side of the buttonhole. So I'm gonna knit one, slip one with my working yarn in front, so exactly as we've been doing. Then I knit one and 
slip on with the working yarn in front. So I've now worked four stitches all together and here now I turn the work. So I work those four and then I turn around my work. So now we're on the wrong side and here I'm gonna knit one, bring my working yarn front and slip one, knit one, working yarn front and slip one. So those two rows I'm gonna be repeating uh, three more times all in all. So I have eight rows all together. If you are using larger buttons, you might need to do two more extra rows or if you're using smaller buttons, you might need to do only maybe six rows. So it's a good idea to have your button handy so you can check a little bit. Um, we will have some yarns here then that we can sort of tighten the buttonhole a little bit with, but it's just good to be mindful. So now I'm just gonna be repeating these two steps three more times. Now I worked the rows eight times all in all. So now I'm gonna work one more time the right side row so that we end up with the working yarn here in the middle. So I repeat once more, just knit one, slip one with the yarn in front until I get here in the middle. And now I'm just gonna cut my yarn with a tail long enough to weave in. Then I join in my yarn again. And now we're gonna work the left side of the buttonhole. So again, starting from the right side and I start, and this time we have five stitches that we're working. So we're gonna knit one. With the working yarn in front, slip one. And we repeat that once more, knit one, working yarn in front, slip one. And then I come to my last stitch here and that one I'm gonna be knitting together with one stitch from the picked up stitches through the back loop. Now I can go ahead also and remove this marker. Then I turn my work around and then for the first one, slip that with the yarn, working yarn in front. And then I knit one, slip one with the working yarn in front, knit one, and slip one with working yarn in front. And those two rows, I'm also gonna be repeating three times. So I get eight rows all in all, and always working that last stitch, knitting that together through the back loops with one from here. So I'm working four stitches and I'm, I'm gonna knit those two together. Two, three, four, and then I knit these two together. Now I'm back on the right side, so I worked eight rows and I want to have a wrong side row next. So I'm gonna work one more time my right side row. So I knit one, slip one with the working yarn in front, knit one, slip one with the yarn in front, and then knit the last two through the back loops together. And next we're gonna join both the columns on the same again. So we're gonna work on from the wrong side so slip the first one with working yarn in front, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. And then we continue. So we grab those stitches that we worked first from the right side of the buttonhole and then just knit one, slip one, knit one and slip one. And that is it. Now the buttonhole is complete. You're gonna end up with these two strands of yarns and these you can weave in here, sort of you have this like column so you can weave them in there pretty seamlessly so you're not gonna be able to see them. And I'm just gonna check, let's see. Yeah, it fits well. My recommendation is rather do the buttonhole a little, just a little bit too tight than too loose because in my experience, buttonholes tend to stretch out a little bit. But again, you can also use these strands here that we have to tighten it up a little bit so it doesn't flop out with wear. So that is it. You're gonna work the entire, all the way along in this double knitting. As you can see, it produces such a gorgeous and nice finishing. I have one more buttonhole and then all the way around. And then I'll meet you back here for the last stitches on how to bind those off. I worked the entire double knitted front edge placket until I have 
10 stitches left. So I have nine of the stitches that I've cast on in the beginning. And then I have one stitch left from the picked up stitches. And I worked a wrong side row last. So I have now my yarn here. So I'm ready to work a right side row. So when I have 10 stitches left, I am going to cut the yarn and thread it onto a tapestry needle. All right, let's bind off these stitches using the Italian bind off method. So we always will have one knit and a purl stitch or a purl and a knit stitch that we're gonna work. So I always think of these as in pairs. And first there's a little preparation step we need to do before we can get going. So first we're gonna insert the tapestry needle into the first stitch purl wise, meaning going from right to left and pull the yarn through. All right, then we're ready to begin. So we're gonna bring the needle from the back through these two first stitches. I'm gonna insert it here and bring my needle and yarn to the front. So between, between the first two stitches. And now when we have a knit stitch, we're gonna go, so we have a knit stitch here first on the needle. We're gonna go in through these both stitches knit wise. So first I always start with the second stitch so I go in through knit wise, pull the yarn through, and then I do the same with the first stitch. So knit wise, meaning I go from the left to the right and pull my yarn through. And that's it. We can now go ahead and slip this first stitch off the needle. So we bound off one stitch. Next, we have a purl stitch here first and then a knit stitch. So for these, we're first again, always gonna work the second stitch. So this time I'm gonna go in purl wise because we have a purl stitch here first. So this time I go from right to the left, first in the second stitch, pull my yarn through. And then I do the same with the first stitch. So again, from the right to the left and pull the yarn through. And then I can go ahead and slip that stitch. So we've bound off now two stitches all in all. Next, there is a knit stitch and a purl stitch. So then again, we're first gonna go from behind the work and bring the needle between these two stitches. So we get the working yarn here between them. And then I'm gonna go in knit wise first through the second one. And then also through the first one, knitwise from right, left to right. And we've bound off one stitch again. And then purlwise through the second stitch because we have a purl stitch next. And then purlwise through the first stitch. And we can slip that stitch off. And we have a knit stitch. So again, we're going to take our needle through these first, between these first two stitches. I go in through the second stitch and the first stitch knit wise and bound off one stitch, tighten it a little bit. Then we have a purl stitch. So we need to go in purl wise through the second and purl wise through the first. And again, slip that stitch off and tighten a little bit. Then we have a knit stitch inserted between the first two stitches from the back to the front. And go in knit wise from left to the right, first the second stitch and then the first stitch. Tighten and bound off. Then a knit stitch, no sorry, a purl stitch first. So we go in purl wise through the second, purl wise through the first and bind off that stitch. And now we only have one or two stitches left but we're going to count these as one stitch. So I am going to be, so these are both, this is a knit stitch and this is also a knit stitch. So I'm just going to bring my yarn here between these two stitches and then I'm gonna treat them both as one stitch. So I'm gonna go in through them from the left to the right like this 
and I'm actually gonna go in through that one also one more time. So the first stitch knitwise, and then I can go ahead and remove my needle and tighten that a little bit. And then I'm gonna secure this. I'm gonna, I think, do one more. So I kind of close this gap between the <laughs> double knitted placket. So I insert my yarn there, maybe take it through a little bit so I can get, so I don't get like a floppy back, but you can see that it's very seamless now. And then I can just weave in the end here on the wrong side. The last step before blocking the cardigan is attaching the buttons. I mean, you can also do it afterwards, but I'm so impatient, so I want to attach them already now. And I've gone ahead and attached my first to the top and the middle button and make sure that they align with the button holes. When you're attaching the buttons, it's a good idea to have the cardigan on a flat surface so you can make sure that the buttons and the button holes will align nicely. And I mean, yeah, it would maybe make more sense to block it first and do this after. But as I said, again, I'm so impatient. I want to see how it looks already now. <laughs> so I only have my one left. So I'm going to be placing it. I think here is going to be good. I'm just using one strand of the merino that I worked the cardigan in. Um, you can obviously choose a thinner yarn, the same color, or if you worked multiple yarns, you could just choose, for example, one strand. I'm attaching my buttons with just some crisscross stitches here. And one thing I want to do is as a last step, I'm just bringing my yarn here between and I'm going to sort of wrap it around once. This will just elevate the button a little bit so it becomes a little bit easier to then use it. And then I just bring my yarn to the back and then I'm going to weave in my end here in the side seam. All right, the buttons are attached. So now the last step is to soak this whole thing. I'm gonna use warm or kind of lukewarm water and then I'm gonna dry it flat. I've added in this delicate laundry detergent into my water just because I find that that sometimes softens up the fabric. And since I'm using a silk mohair in my cardigan, I'm hoping that this will just help it soften up a little bit. No, hey! <laughs> All right, let's give it a bath. This is a very big project, so you'll probably have to squeeze a little bit to make sure that the whole thing, all the fibers get soaked. Now I'm just squeezing out the water and I'm making sure to not wring or rub anything when it's wet. So I just squeeze out any water. Now I'm letting it dry flat. I am placing it underneath this fan thing blowing warm air on it so hopefully it will dry quickly and then I've just placed it on this cardboard thing because I don't have anything better right now. <laughs> I've stretched it out to the measurements I want so I felt like I wanted a little bit more width to the body, made sure to align these nicely and the sleeves they became pretty long so I've stretched them out in this direction a little bit. Yes, we go. <laughs> My cardigan is ready. I have blocked it and let it dry flat and I could not be happier with the fit of it, especially since at the moment I'm growing my own little bump, um, which definitely means that cardigans, I think, are going to be my go-to pieces <laughs> the upcoming winter. So the fact that I knitted this in size medium, I added a few, or I'm not sure if I did it according to pattern, if I added a few centimeters on the body, at least I did stretch it out quite a bit when it was wet. And I did add a few centimeters, so maybe about an inch to the sleeves because I wanted them to be extra long. 
and I'm super happy with the end result and also I'm loving this color and that it has a bit of a fuzzy uh, sheen from the silk mohair and just currently going through a green phase. So I think this is gonna be definitely a go-to piece. And I also really like how the buttons turned out in this placket. I just think it like brings it all together. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you would like to make your own darling cardigan, then you can find the links to download the pattern below. You can either come to my own website at kutovakika.com or then if you prefer Ravelry. So I have also all my patterns in my Ravelry store. I also had a sample knitter uh, named Elisa. She also knitted a darling cardigan in a gray color. And here I added some snap buttons and then just some funky kind of diamond detail buttons just to kind of try something different. And I just think it's nice to see the same design in different colors because it does vary a lot depending on the color. And also gray is of course such a go-to nice color that just works with anything. I would also love to see your darling cardigans. If you decide to make one, you can use the hashtag, hashtag darling cardigan, and you can always find more of what I am working on at Instagram. I'm over there at Kutovakika, so I would love for you to come and say hi or just connect over there where I also share more of the behind the scenes uh, stuff. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial uh, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye.